Hey guys, welcome back to KB Small Engine Repair. Today we're going to be showing you how to measure for out of roundness in a cylinder bore. I've got this engine here that I'm rebuilding and I wanted to double check the out of roundness and the service limits on this cylinder before I uh, start putting new parts on it and actually rebuilding the engine for this customer. I suspect there's some other issues in there and um, so I'll walk you through that today. So. I'll show you how, how I do it, um, how, how I feel like a lot of people do it. I think this is a, a general um, way to do this. Um, so let's jump right in. So one of the reasons we do this, uh, it can save you a lot of money in parts. If you get a, a customer who brings you this engine per se, uh, says, hey, I, I think it needs a new set of rings. You bring this engine in, throw a new set of rings on, take, do a whole tear down, put a new set of rings on, put it back on, and it's doing the same issues or having the same problems. That's a lot of wasted money and parts and labor. Um, so while you've got it tear, torn down, why not just do a couple quick, simple measurements, uh, make sure it's all within spec, uh, all within the service limits, and save yourself a lot of headache, um, which is why we do this. So today, we are going to use a few different tools. I personally use a telescoping gauge. This is a Mitutoyo. This is a pretty high quality uh, measuring tool. Always also you'd be using a micrometer. The width of the cylinder bore, this is a two to three inch micrometer. They make them in inch increments. So uh, zero to one, one to two, two to three, and three to four. Um, that's the set that I have. They may make different sizes. Um, and then a piece of paper. So how, how I do this, how, how, uh, a lot of people do this. I think this, this, how I learned this was from a, a Kohler technical school. Um, so I think this is pretty well recognized, but you measure the top bottom or excuse me, top, middle and bottom, both on the X and Y axis. Um, the thrust and the non thrust axis is what they call it. Um, so you, you take two, me two measurements, X and Y, both the top, middle, and bottom, and mark those down, and then uh, we'll go from there. So take your telescoping gauge. Again, they, I have a big set of these. This is a uh, two and seven eighths to three and a quarter inch or whatever. Um, if you don't know how these work, you can look it up, but um, they spread out, and then as they go in, you, you can go in and then you tighten them up at the bottom. So once it goes in, tighten the knob at the bottom, and then it stays that way. So I know that's a little bit hard to, to see, but let's go right in and do it, and we'll start doing some calculating. So on the bottom, if you know, um, there's, depending on the size of the cylinder, there is some virgin territory on the bottom of the cylinder. Uh, the bottom of here, you're probably, we're about an inch. There's about an inch of virgin territory. And that is where the cylinder does not, um, does not touch, does not rub, um, does not use um, when it's running. I wish I could show you, but it's, it'd be hard to see. Anyways, there's still a perfect cross hatch in the bottom um, inch of this cylinder. So you don't want to measure there. That's that's not going to help you at all. Um, so you want to be maybe a quarter to a half inch above that. So just make sure not to measure any of that virgin territory. The point of this is to measure where the wear is of this cylinder. So make sure this telescoping gauge is flat level. Once you've got it locked into place, dip it down one way so you don't push in. There's our first measurement. Bring it over to your micrometer. I have this little micrometer stand which kind of helps a lot. You can put it in a vise or other things. Let that ratchet a couple times, lock it into place. And so because this is a three to four inch micrometer, we are at three. So we're bottom, 
we're at the bottom thrust. So we're at three and we are at one thousandths, so zero, zero, one. And then you come up here. If you don't know how to use a micrometer, there, you can watch some YouTube videos on it or whatever. There's several different styles. Zero, zero, one, three. So I already know there's an issue on this because this particular engine, um, the specs are, um, the cylinder bore should be a minimum of 2.990 and then a maximum uh, service limit of 3.3 inches, 3.000. Um, and that was 3.0013. Um, so we're already out of specs on this one, which is kind of what I expected, but. So now let's do the middle thrust. Okay, and we are three point zero zero one two. And I'll show you these measurements in a second when we're all done. I'm just trying to get these measurements all taken. And then again, you don't want to be at the very top just slightly down below. Make sure it's level, locked in space, locked into place. And bow it out. So this, this cylinder's also got a taper. We can touch base on that for a second. Zero, zero, two, three. Okay, so the thrust axis is finished. Now let's go to the non-thrust, or the Y. Uh, I believe it's Y. I can't remember which one is X and Y, but I just call them thrust and non-thrust. Okay, this one's quite a bit different. So this one we are three. We're 20, 24 thousandths on that one, so zero, two, four. Seven. So we are way out of round on this, which is just what I expected. This engine was covered in dirt, debris. I mean, I had to scrape it off. So probably got overheated, warped. Um, who knows what, but this engine is 26 years old. And it appears that it has met its service limit.
Oops, I didn't do that one right. Did I? Can't remember. You can measure a couple, two, three times if you're off or To go back and watch the video see if I did that one right this one's not sticking right maybe my thing is sticky simple thing is bumping it on the way up you know pushing this dial in can throw things off Okay, that was the middle, so three point, another 24 thousandths, so zero, two, four, seven. So that was the exact same as the bottom. Last one, top non-thrust. Keep screwing that up. Okay, so three twenty four and we are at wow, seven thousandths, seven ten thousandths. So that is all measuring. So Let's go over to the bench and I'll show you how to figure out the out of round. All right, we're back. So here are my measurements. Got them all written down. So top, middle, bottom, the non-thrust and the thrust axis. So how do you find out of round? How do you find the taper? So out of round, you subtract the thrust from the non-thrust. So let's do that real quick. Uh, I know you won't be able to see it, um, but I'll I'll just do it real quick. You can take these numbers if you want and do it with me. Uh, just pause your screen and, and take that and do it with me real quick. Um, otherwise, I'll just do it real quick right here. So um, so let's do the top first. So 3.0247 minus 3.0023. Boy, so the out of round... On the top is 0 0.0224, so 22 and a half thousandths. Am I saying that right? 22 thousandths. Just round it. 22 thousandths. Middle, 3.0247 minus 3.0012. Out of round is 0 0.0235, 23 and a half thousandths, 24 thousandths if you're rounding up. <whistles> Bottom, 3.0247 minus 3.0013.
0 0.0234, 23 thousandths. You know what the, the manual says? The manual says if it's out of if it's out of round three thousandths, 0 0.003, then the cylinder needs to be rebored. Needs to be rebored. Your choice up to 10, 20, or 30 thousandths of an inch. Can't do ten thousandths. It's already over ten thousandths. Can't do twenty thousandths. It's already over twenty thousandths. If we had to, if we rebored this engine, we'd have to rebore it thirty thousandths of an inch. Um, then we'd have to put a new piston in it with oversized rings. Um, that would be our only option to save this engine. Um, yeah. That would be our only option. Now to find taper. So taper is making a cone. Um, what what is the what does the cylinder look like from the top of the cylinder down to the bottom? Um, you basically subtract the top the top measurement from the bottom measurement. So three uh, three point zero zero two three from three point zero zero one three. So what is that? Uh, one one thousandth. Am I saying that right? 3.0023 minus 3.0013. Yeah, so one thousandth. So the taper, the taper on this engine is one thousandth, which isn't much, isn't bad. Um, I think the max max taper uh, that they allowed was two or three thousandth. So um, that's surprisingly still in spec, but. Um, Anyways, the uh, max out of round on these is is just awful. Um, just way out of specs. So let me just check something real quick. Yeah, so the max out of round on this engine is, is just shot. Um, um, there's, I mean, there's no, no chance in, uh, no chance in just, See, see, and that's that's what I was saying by by doing these measurements. I mean, the the customer said, "Oh yeah, this just needs new rings." Old timer works on old cars. He says, "Oh yeah, just throw some new rings on there for me. Do a, do a quick rebuild." If I were to throw some rings on there, you think this that would save this engine? You think that would uh, that would stop this engine from smoking, add compression, um, oil consumption, all that stuff? Pfft, not a chance. Not a chance. It's going to do the exact same thing. And I would have wasted, you know, I've, I've, I'm already into this, some labor, um, but it would have, you know, I would have handed them a bill for, you know, X amount of labor hours plus the parts. Um, he would have got them back and would have done the same thing. So you can see why doing some quick measurements while you've got your engine taken apart can save you and your customer both time and money. Um, so I'm a little rusty on this. I, I, I only do this a few times a year. Um, you know, as, as you know, small engines can be quite costly to, you know, repair. A lot of people just want to do a, an engine swap or they don't want to fix it. So, um, you know, I only do a few, few engine rebuilds a year. So, um, I'm a little rusty on this need to need to stay on top of it and brush up on it. But, um, hopefully this, this video was helpful. Hopefully the information is helpful. Um, if it was, please hit that thumbs up, uh, Please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get all my videos um, when they come out. I try to try to upload every week, uh, a couple times a week. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this video. And uh, as always, make a choice to have a great day. Thank you all for watching.